Hello everyone and welcome to this session where David and I are going to be looking at what's been happening in uh, the, on the markets and uh, everything except Forex in this particular session. We're going to look at some stocks. I think we've got, we've got some commodities as well, but um, generally see uh, how we can apply a volume price analysis to uh, to our trading, sometimes to our investing, um, as I said, by looking at those particular markets. But before we start as usual, can I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen, as you know, trading and investing can be a very risky business. So please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. We haven't actually done a session at this time for, oh, I can't remember the last time we did it, but we thought we'd just uh, mix it up a bit. And um, it's uh, it allows um, a lot of our uh, US traders to kind of join us. Uh, it's not quite the end of uh, end of the session, but it's um, you know we we're getting there as it were, and it's not such um, uh, you know such a struggle as it were for those of us in the UK. It doesn't really matter. It's it's evening here, and I know uh, we are joined sometimes by people in the in the Far East, and I think it's very very early in the morning. But wherever you are in the morning, wherever you are in the world, um, you're very welcome. And thank you so much for taking. Uh, your time out to come and spend it with us. Um, that's it. I'm just going to take this down because I want to go uh, pretty much straight on to uh, the charts and some other things that I want to cover. In fact, let me start with what I was going to uh, cover. Those of you who have um, come along regularly will know that one of the things we've been uh, well I've been covering is how you select um, stocks to trade now in in forex although we're not going to cover forex one of the ways uh, we have uh, uh, we have got around that well first of all in forex you only have you have a, a, a much smaller choice generally um, for retail traders it's the choice between 28 pairs choosing um, a trade you know finding a trade between 28 is is fairly straightforward and we've developed some particular tools to help our traders um, those are available from quantum trading and when it comes to stocks it is you know it's my goodness it's totally overwhelming because there are thousands of them uh, and that's just in the US market and of course you've got the UK market and you've got local markets as well and Clearly, one of the things, if you are um, going to be thinking about a stock trading, forget how you're going to stock trade, whether you're actually going to buy and sell the stocks themselves, or are you going to be doing some kind of options uh, with them, um, or you're going to do some kind of fractional trading. That all depends on really the amount of money that you have to start. What is your starting capital? But we're going to be covering that in future sessions, but this is, uh, uh, and as I said, if you've been coming along, you'll know we've highlighted quite a number of sort of free sites where you can go and sort of start with this research. And the, the one site that I think probably stands out above all the others for looking at, um, uh, you know, a selection, looking at a, you know, a filtering, if you like. And this is Finviz. Now, thus far, all we have done is we have, um, I've, I've done a very, very simple, very straightforward um, search criteria. And as I said, if those of you who've come along will have seen this before, but I just want to take it a little bit further because there's there are other um, elements that you can add to uh, to your filter that also um, integrates quite nicely with the volume price analysis methodology. Volume price analysis is methodology is obviously price action, volume, uh, candles, candle patterns, support and resistance, and also looking at uh, um, um, markets in multiple time frames. So what we've done is is when you look at the um, is where you start here. This is the one. This is the uh, the screener page that you start with. 
uh, you, you can see what the uh, what the, the search selection is. I mean, I've kept the exchange as any, but if I actually uh, if I keep that as that mark now, this is quite an interesting. This is market cap. Um, well, I've left it as any, which means it will throw up, um, you know, mega companies uh, worth 200 billion or, or more the teslas the uh, the facebook's the apples etc cetera, etc cetera. and you can go right down, and you know but you can select all the way down to the micros and in in the middle you've got the uh, the small caps um, the mid caps and the reason i want to mention that is it it also knowing um, where a stock sits in uh, how valuable it is also has an impact on its liquidity i'm not talking about the volume of shares that are uh, traded on a daily basis it's liquidity at the moment markets are you know they're ticking along they are uh, the indices are at all time highs again the volume has uh, reduced and uh, when we look at the charts we will see that you know it, it it may look rosy on the outside but at this particular time of year there's an awful lot of window dressing that goes on to coming up to the back end of the year um, funds have got to um, you know present reports and what have you and the the market in terms of seasonality um, it likes to stay positive you've all heard of the Santa's rally so between now and Christmas markets you know they they push up uh, whether it's valid or not because it's the end of year now that didn't happen in 2018 it was like the nightmare before Christmas and that was when there but there's one Fed meeting in December just before the end of the year and they really absolutely upset the apple cart back in 2018 but generally speaking between now on Christmas markets tend to be very positive I mean earnings we're also in earnings seasons earnings are coming in you know uh, very strongly generally speaking and but you'll also find when you look at individual charts um, that you would think good earnings great for the stock the stock price is going to go up and it doesn't it the, the opposite seems to happen and one of the reasons that happens is because markets they look forward they say yeah you've had a great uh, you know you've had a, 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 a great quarter you know you've reported these stonking earnings but can you do it again next time and there are a lot of head wins um, up ahead, one of them obviously being inflation. Uh, you know, the virus still hasn't gone away. There's there's problem with uh, there's all you know, there's the energy sort of energy crisis as well. Inflation is probably the one that uh, the market is most exercised with at the moment. Although what type of inflation we're going to get maybe next year, maybe there's a bit of a debate about. So that's why you can have fantastic uh, reporting and on earnings, but the market. But the, um, the the stock doesn't always go up. It's but if it's a stock that is possibly going to benefit from an inflationary environment, then the opposite can happen. So there's all sorts of um, you know there's all sorts of reasons why that happens. So um, I'm going to leave that for the time being on uh, any market cap. But what happens is if if you were to change that to 10 billion to 200 billion, you see immediately you will get a, a, you know, a, a smaller selection, as it were. So let's just leave it like that. The average volume I've gone for over a million. The relative volume is, a, is the ratio between the current and the three-month average intraday, which basically means um, it, it's, it's higher than it's, so it's, 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 it's one, it's one and a half times more. And that's what you want. You, you, you want a lot of volume because by having a lot of volume, it tells you two things. If it's gen, if, if the price action and the volume are in agreement and not anomalous, what it tells you is that the, what you're seeing on the chart is genuine. But if you're seeing, um, you know, a good volume, but the, 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 the candles don't reflect that, that is an anomaly. So I like to go it over on 1.5. And you're, if you're going to be trading on a, on a daily basis or a very short term basis, you want lots of activity. If you take volume as activity, that's why that's it. And you can adjust that. So if you want to go over two, you will find that will immediately cut it down as well. And you could go even over three. Uh, you may even, you know, that you you are really sort of restricting yourself. But 
as I said, it's it's a great great uh, uh, um, a site for for practicing all this stuff. See what happens when you put these different filters on and what it throws up. The sectors I've left as any. We've talked about sectors before. I'm going to do not sectors today, but I'm going to talk about sectors certainly uh, in the forthcoming um, uh, uh, sessions because we're at the end of the year and we need to know which have been the worst performing, the best performing because that gives us an idea of what may happen next year and then what I've got over here is they have to be optionable and shortable not necessarily because you're going to do that but it just means that again it's this activity and th these are also stocks where there is going to be as I said liquidity at the moment liquidity is is fine you know they're, they're there's lots of buyers out there, you know, maybe even uh, sellers. But if markets become very uh, tricky, if you're in a stock that the, you know, the liquidity is not very good, you know, trying to get offload something can cause a problem. Now, so that's kind of uh, the, the descriptive. But the fun on the, you can also search on, you can also filter on the fundamentals. And the reason I looked at Finviz a little bit more closely is because I had an email from someone I'm not sure if they're with us today uh, but he, he wrote to me and very nice email so you know really appreciated these sessions and particularly with um, you know highlighting introducing uh, the Finviz website and he had actually he knew a little bit more about the fundamentals and he'd actually put uh, put a little um, um, a set of stocks together on the uh, you know based on the the parameters of as I said on what we call the descriptive side and then he added the fundamentals now we don't cover the fundamentals in these sessions not because we don't want to but because we're talking more about trading and the fundamentals the fundamental metrics for stocks are really I would say much more for uh, from an investing perspective, but it's something that we will certainly cover uh, in a program that David and I are kind of already talking about, sort of putting together. And you know, these will go. We will go into a, a very uh, great detail uh, on uh, on the fundamental metrics. But he has actually added in one or two. I don't know what they are, um, but he's added them because you know. I think he's going. He wants to buy and wants to stay in for a little. He's not quite an investor, but not a trader. He's kind of in this in between. And the main, the difference between a trader and investor is essentially the amount of time that you are likely to be holding on to something. And if you're a trader, um, the, the, you certainly have to pay attention to the fundamentals in terms of the earnings, and you know know what's likely to affect. The, the price action on a daily basis, as is going on at the moment because we're in earnings season. But you really wouldn't pay a lot of attention to, say, uh, earnings per share or the return, the return on assets or the return on uh, return on investment and what have you and the nice thing about this uh, this screener is it, it's it's a great learning resource. You just highlight it and it's explains it to you so you don't have to go off and, and search. But there's also a third um, element to this, which I must I must confess, hand on heart, I haven't really paid an awful lot of attention to it other than I stuck the beta on and the beta is a, a measure of the stock's price volatility. Volatility is something you really have to get to grips with and understand if you are going to take your stock trading, investing onto, uh, you know, go into the options side of things. And again, this is something that we are uh, will be covering in, uh, in a little bit in these sessions, but it's something that is going to be a huge part of the uh, stock program that we want to put together. And the reason for that is when David and I started in options, lots of, many, many years ago, uh, we uh, we had a very simple um, a strategy in the, in as much that we, we used to do something called a buy right. We would buy stocks and we would immediately write a covered call, which, uh, which paid us a premium. And 
for a covered call, you really have to, um, the stock has to, the chart has to be set up in a particular way and you really have to understand volatility. But, and we did it for income. So we had the, we had the stock and we kind of earned a rent on the, st on the, uh, on the stock. Uh, it was, this is how it was described to us. And I think it's the best description. It's like you have a house and you rent it out. And with the, uh, with the, with the stock we had at, you know, uh, in Honeywell, I can't remember, Duke Energy, that was the one we had and in that back in the day it was was it hilton david hilton hotels hill hotels and we we just kept and and um was it owens illinois i mean they were just some of the stocks we held and we just every month the the premium would come in and you know the stock was never called the stock was i think we were only called away once on one of our stock but it didn't really matter because you know we got more than we paid for it and it was a very very nice way of uh, you know, owning uh, owning the stock, but also earning not just the dividends, but the premium from the covered call. And one of the things you you um, you want to know about a stock is how volatile it is. And we didn't want a particularly volatile stock with a covered call. We wanted it kind of mildly bullish, so that it would tempt people to think that it was going to go up, but actually it was going to be sort of range bound. So beta is was very important, and you know. We wanted it to have some beta, but not too much. But beta, in terms of day trading, is really important. You have to see, because the, the higher the number, then the more volatile it is. But it's like everything else with volatility. It's a bit like Goldilocks. You don't want too much, and you don't want too little. So that's what I've, uh, that's what I've done here. But looking across here, what you can actually uh, uh, look at as well, and I haven't been through all of them, but the RSI we use um, we use the this, the concept of the RSI a lot in the forex market because it is a market of mean reversion. You know things get oversold, things get overbought, and they go back. And we look at a reversal uh, a, a tactic. And the forex market is very much buy and sell, buy and sell. You don't really you know because it has these oscillations, these sine waves, and we use a, 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 the, the concept concept of the RSI very, very much so. And we've actually developed uh, indicators that that incorporate this uh, this co this concept. In stocks, it's yes, you can by all means, you know, apply it. Um, this is something we're looking at for uh, as part of our own quantum indicators, but not coming up with the sort of standard RSI. Um, we're we're looking at sort of tweaking it slightly so that it's it, it's 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 a it's it's more how can I put it? it's a little bit more sophisticated than uh, than the the ones that appear on most platforms. However, the concept itself is quite interesting because rightly or wrongly, if you are the sort of trader that only, you know, that has a, a preference, I wouldn't say a bias, a preference, because a bias means that you, you're not necessarily aware of it, a preference, say, on the buy side, it can be very useful to see when something is oversold. So, and it saves an awful lot of time looking at charts. So if you know a particular chart, you know, uh, from your filter that the, the, you know, the chart is approaching an oversold uh, state as I've as I've put up here, uh, which is 40. And in fact, I could go all the way to, to 10, but I don't think I've got anything at 10. Nothing is that oversold at the moment. So let's see, let's see at 20. No, I couldn't get anything at 20. So I stuck to 40. And at 40, I actually got um, quite a few charts. And this is quite a nice, ex uh, this Brazil, forget that one. But the uh, Boeing, yep, yeah, that one, it just tells you that it is, you know, has been selling off. Therefore, is it at a point where possibly it is going to reverse? So this is actually quite a nice um, chart that we have here. As you can see, it's seven dollars thirty-four. Um, it's oversold. If you look at the candle, not today's candle, yesterday's candle is a down candle, but there's a there's a, a wick to the bottom of that candle with a lot of volume underneath it. So possibly this is looking to maybe move higher. It's in oil and gas, it's in, in the oil and gas sector, which has done phenomenally well this year. 
that has, uh, has sort of come off slightly. If I just flick that open quickly, um, you can see here, in fact, we talked about the oil and gas sectors back in September, wasn't it, David, or late August, September? And, you know, this is where it is. So this has had a really uh, a nice run up. Um, you've got a sort of a hammer candle down here, a really, really nice trend, not, not volatile, fairly steady, just up, and then it goes into this consolidation and then bang. Now, there may be a very good reason why it suddenly sold off, and I suspect that's also a volatility candle. So we had the, uh, the uh, price action into the spread of the candle and then another thump lower. But look, look at what's happened. It is oversold. Um, um, because of the price action that we have at the moment. But there's been a big wick to the bottom of that candle. So, But you wouldn't have had that um, that uh, chart come up if you hadn't you know, put the RSI up there. And if you have a preference to the sell side, then obviously then you look at the overbought. So let's have a look and see what comes up. Yeah, and we've got Tesla. I'm going to talk about Tesla um, because I did a, a post on Tesla and Tesla <laughs> got, so, got so much abuse. On, I get abuse on, so, <laughs> I put my head around a parapet on certain things, gold being one, Tesla being another. And Tesla... God love him. I, I have a, so much admiration for Elon Musk, but I can only, you know, David and I can only call it as we see it. And, you know, what we said was that it's, you know, the volume is, is falling as the price is rising, even on the monthly chart. And I think we said it uh, before the shooting start. I think it was said it had a gap up. Uh, because it was it was earnings, and then this sucking great the shooting star has has come up, and today it's actually gone into the spread. So it's you know it's now there's lots of reasons um, you know other than the sort of VPO. And David will go through the chart in a little bit long. Up, yeah. yeah, David's got it all all up there. The thing about Tesla is this, um, it's and and it's also a great example of what I wanted to say about the options market. And from when we first started, um, the, the the retail participation in options and the ability to to trade stocks using options with an option app, things like Robinhood, Webull, those uh, you know free commission free trading, as it were, by using the options mechanism. And you have you know groups in on Reddit and um, and Wall Street Bets, etc., who kind of are a collective who trade as a collective as well, which is fine, which which is great. Has actually kind of skewed the options market in as much that you have tremendous number of traders all buying calls. If you buy a call, you think the price is going to go up. And so the, the sheer pressure, the options market, and what happens is, is that there are now dealers who are, who sit, you know, they're, they're not, they're not at the exchange, but they kind of absorb all these, all these, all these calls. They, they, they make sure that the market functions, and it kind of skews all that what they call the, uh, the Greeks. Again, this is something I don't want to go into in a great deal of detail, but it's what we're going to cover in the in the program because it's really, really important to to understand. And what it means is now tomorrow is ex we and these are weekly calls which were never around when we were around. It was it was monthly, wasn't it? That was the shortest time frame that you could use. Yes. But but weekly calls, uh, they all expire on a Friday, um, have caused, as I said, not, a, not there is a, not a skew. I mean, it's brought masses of people into the market, but it's changed the nature of the market. Now, what happens with Tesla, if I give you an example, yesterday there was 16 billion of, of call options uh, just on Tesla. That's And it was 55% of the entire options market. So you can see, you can understand why, price, you know, the, the, the sheer volume of, of uh, call will also help 
to drive the price up. It's not necessary, it won't be reflected in the volume, but it will Im does impact the actual price action. But um, I'm not going to talk about Tesla anymore. I'll leave David uh, to, uh, to explain that. So we'll see tomorrow whether the VPA signals that, that David and I saw um, in the last couple of days on, uh, well, longer than a couple of days on Tesla, in which, you know, we put our head above the parapet and we probably got it, <laughs> got, got, got rotten tomatoes thrown at us. Um, we're going to see what happens when all these court, you know, when the what happens tomorrow at expiration. So, uh, as I said, Tesla is a really interesting, and Tesla's not the only one. There are these, um, there are these uh, Mimi, st uh, Mimi stocks, but Tesla is a. You, you listen, there are fund managers out there. There's one particular fund manager who lives not far from where we are. I won't mention his name because, uh, you know, he writes about this and he, you know, he bailed out of Tesla. And I think when it was $100, he thought this isn't going anywhere. The company's not making any money. The fundamentals, uh, you know, are, are just ridiculous. And it, he's just, uh, Musk has just plowed on and on and on. And, you know, good luck to him, as it were. So, and in a way, Tesla is has been a, it's been a growth stock where the fundamentals have caught up, as it were. So it, the valuations for it. But if you looked at it when it was seventy dollars, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars a share, you wouldn't, you know, as a fund manager, you wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. But then you also have to remember with with fund managers is, is they have some very strict uh, criteria for what what they can and cannot buy so as i said it's uh, it's it's quite an uh, you know it's it's not amusing it's just interesting and it's something that uh, i certainly we will certainly incorporate in the uh, the program because as i said the market has changed and it is changing rapidly the participation how how we you know how we look at uh, uh, stocks and, and equities i mean there's there's talk that the exchange is going to be um, open a bit longer, I think, as of not ne maybe next year or what have you. But I actually think there's, because I've read this, that there are people who are pushing for uh, stock trading to be done on a 24 hour basis. You know, why should it close? Why, why can't it be like, and at the weekends, why can't it be like Bitcoin? It just trade, you know, it is non stop trading. Now, the other thing it has here as well is the patterns. Now, I've, I've decided I'm actually going to pay for the uh, for the elite service because I I'm, I just get a lot more than the free but for when you start the free is fine and you know the as because support and resistance is such a huge part of um, VPA and we tend to use just horizontal SNR using volume and uh, price based um, if you click on that and you will see that and you know again you will get a different set of uh, um, uh, charts as it were and what it also has is and the reason i want the custom elite was is because you've also got individual candles and if you are for example one someone who's looking for potentially a stock because you have a preference to the long side well of course you know the, the the candle that 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 says that is the you know the, the premier candle for a potential uh, you know reversal higher is the hammer candle, and we talked about a pattern being saucer patterns. Well, you know, buying always comes in at the bottom at you know when you have lots and lots of wicks, and if you've got lots and you know if you've got wicks, you know, is it it is one signal. It doesn't mean there's going to be a, an immediate reversal, but it's in, it's an initial indication that something is going to happen. So I hope you will uh, spend a little bit more time on Finviz, playing around with the different um, uh, uh, the different um, uh, filters and what have you. And one other thing I was going to say on the um, candlesticks is are these two candles. The Marubozu. And the reason this candle, these candles are quite interesting, in fact, I haven't got a black one, but I did have on Viac, and we'll have a look at Viac, is because this candle, whether it's uh, if it's if it's black, it's a down candle, is 
it's a very widespread candle. It doesn't have any wicks to the top or the bottom. It might have a little tiny one uh, to the top and the bottom. And it's the and it's a brilliant candle to use for benchmarking and also to see whether, in fact, um, the price action and the volume is it anomalous and the one that came up it hasn't come up this time because well it just hasn't because it's um it, it, the the the, per, the the filters um the stock sort of refresh I, I don't know how often they do refresh but but they do and we'll talk about vertex energy in a minute because it, this actually came up as a hammer candle let me just have a look at viac yeah, this is where. Now this actually came up as uh, this was the candle, it and it and it's and it's dropped out because it's actually developed um, um, uh, a wick to the bottom of the candle, and w what it was, if this was a marubozu, you wouldn't have this wick. It's just a solid candle. If I can give you say an example, that's that would be one. That would be a, um, a solid candle. That would be a solid candle. There's a tiny wick on, on, underneath there, but uh, nothing, uh, you know, nothing uh, to write home about. And what it is, when you look at the volume underneath it, this is this is a down candle, and you look at that volume, you have to try and benchmark it against one that of, of say of a similar size, or you look at the volume and you think, well, hold on a minute, um, you know, the range of that candle was was is is this, but it's only got a tiny amount of, of volume. That would be seen as an anomaly, and you would say, okay. Is this going to go any further? The, the chances are no. And in fact, this hasn't turned into a marabuza because we've actually got some buying has come into uh, Viac. Viac is, is an interesting one because, and is certainly one that to look forward, uh, maybe to put on, and I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on this one because there are so many um, good VPA lessons, is if we look at it, this is a, this is the monthly chart. It has gone from ten dollars in 2020. It shot up to 106. Um, we can see here these two these two um, sort of I don't know what the filters would have said at the time, but all I know it crept up up to the volume up to the volume point of control. And earlier this year it shot up. We've got volatility, 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 and then we have the mother and father of all um, uh, sort of um, uh, sort of I wouldn't say it's a shoot, not really a shooting star, but I mean with a with with weakness, and then it's gone back right down to uh, 30 36 dollars now this is the this is the monthly chart could this actually go you know back or the back down to 10 well to be honest anything is possible I think with Viacom I think there was some kind of family dispute on it I'm not sure you'd have to you'd have to go and do the research on it but looking at the at the price action and looking at what's actually been happening here we are that's this is on the weekly chart there we are let's have a look there we are and what's it, there is weakness here despite what we see on on the daily is we've had as i said this it's it's, a, it's almost like a pump and dump there's a massive uh, uh, ramping up of uh of the price action and you know you look at the volume underneath it i know it's all distorted by this uh, by this here but you know this is what I'm saying about the range of the candles with the volume underneath it. Until you end up with this sort of massive doji. Now, doji isn't always a reversal, but it's volatility, volatility, not a huge amount of volume under um, under that, and certainly not a lot of volume under that one, which is actually less volume under this candle than there is in this candle. And then suddenly, bang, down it goes, and it went all the way back down to forty forty dollars. And it just been going nowhere around the you know around the volume point of control, trying to trying to rise and just you know just sort of drifting drifting lower. And this is where your levels come in because levels are also terribly important. Um, you know you you have you you do the the volume and price action analysis, but then you know where is that occurring? You know. Is it at a significant level? And certainly, the volume, the volume point of control is hugely, hugely important. You know, is it 
um, it will act at the moment it's it's below that so that will act will give further bearish um, uh, pressure on this particular uh, uh, chart and um, I don't have the Camarilla levels on here uh, if I did it would they would tell me where this price action is likely to go well the, based on volume the the obvious uh, point is here and it's about it's about 35 it's about 35 but on the day as I said, we've had some buying coming in because it's actually stopped on the volume support on the daily chart. You also have to remember the levels uh, on all charts, especially around zeros and fives, there will be traders, investors who think, you know what, it's fallen down to this point. I think it's a good I think it's a good place maybe to, you know, to put some buys in. You know, you are also constantly trying to analyze what the psychology of the market is and also your your, your traders with whom against whom you are trading um, and you know people have all sorts of views about well they think oh that's very cheap now it's gone down because it's gone down from 140 oh it's only you know 30 dollars oh that that's a bit of a bargain um, not necessarily seeing on the slower time frames actually the selling hasn't hasn't finished and you know you really do have to be a little bit patient but the finviz screener um together with you know understanding uh, the the five elements of volume price analysis will tell you whether in fact it is time possibly to take a reverse because this would be a reversal trade because the price has fallen and you know it is now potentially going to go higher and you also have to remember that prices fall an awful lot quicker than they rise um, this morning I was messing around with my with my MT4 platform and you know there have, there have been some fantastic moves in Forex this morning uh, uh, needless to say you know they always it pairs always you know rush away lower and you think oh great there's a nice little reversal come in and it does come in but oh boy oh boy I, I think my preference is like David to the short side because I want to get in and I want to get out and um, you know but hey that's that's just that's just me right vertex vertex is another one that I actually picked up and I'm also going to have keep an eye on it um, AMD was another one but vertex was and this is an interesting one because this is vertex energy because we can see here that, and this is market beat you know, uh, the energy sector has been very very profitable we can see here the one-year performance is plus 1,000 percent this is partly in response to rising oil prices um, it's just just the whenever there's talk about inflation the one sector that does do well and that is uh, the commodities do but the energy sector do well because there are certain um, uh, things in our lives that we cannot you know even if price goes up we might cut back food is one clearly and energy is another we have to stay warm we you know if we've got to get a work in our car so the energy and uh, the um, the energy stocks and the oil price they will be a beneficiary so that's it but as you can see here the five days the one month the three month it hasn't been so um, uh, hasn't been so uh, fantastic but the reason I, I liked uh, this particular stock is again is because of the sheer the anomaly the sheer amount of volume that came in at uh, the bottom here now with also with market um, market beat as well what you can get is a great roundup of, um, of of what the latest news is and it just gives you not necessarily not the fundamentals but just saying you know what's um, uh, you know who's interested in it you know the fact that it's um you know is it one of these mimi stocks are people going to i think it's very very heavily shorted as well where is it oh we've got insiders a, a lot of selling is it is it going to be uh that, is it you know is you know if the people who run the company aren't um you know they're they're bailing out then you think well you know what what do they know the short interest increases by 24.4 that's a lot that is a lot this is the beginning of the month so you know for whatever reason um, it's the market has suddenly just you know decided that this stock is one that um, you know is is ripe for selling but 
what I have here, let me just, just put that back to a vertex because let's, if we look at the chart, BT, and I'll, Yeah, let's have a look at the daily chart. And I think also, if my memory serves me right, let's have a look. I'll go back to the months on this one. Yes, this was another classic pump and dump that I call. You can see here on the on the uh, on this is on the monthly actually, the the amount of time this this stock did nothing absolutely nothing it was stuck in this channel between the um, uh, the, the, the resistance and uh, the support now the this particular indicator on here for ninja trader which is also available for trading view in this particular format what happens is every time a price touches a particular level um, and it, it obviously you have you have a line that is that is uh, displayed painted on the uh, on the chart but the more times it's it, it's it's touched, the stronger it becomes. And what eventually happens when a stock is in massive consolidation, as this is, you get this channel. So this channel, you know, it channels. And this is the monthly chart, but this happens on all on all time frames. Eventually, it'll break one in one direction or the other. Now it looked as though it was going to break to the downside because it did actually go below the, uh, the this blue support but again because we use volume uh, support as well as price based support the price actually held and the, the volume is very you can hard you can't see it here because it's all distorted by the amount of uh, that that uh, of, uh, that came under this candle in fact it started to come un, uh, under under this one you can see here it actually fell back it went back into it kind of retreated back into the channel. These three candles are quite interesting because there's weakness there. Then you've got a like a little uh, like a little spinning top there. And but look at the volume underneath it. So it's still stuck in the channel. And then you get this this huge sugar rush that goes into this into this uh, stock. Massive uh, candle volatility. Uh, indicator triggered because of the little purple arrows top and bottom so we know we're going to get a retrace into the spread of that candle which we did masses of volume underneath it okay you might have missed that one the next one came but and it's when the volume is out of kilter with what you see on the chart yes you've got a big deep wick to the bottom of that candle but look at the volume underneath it if it took that much volume to shift it that far you know, it's you're going to have to see at least as much again. You don't, and this time we have had a reversal. To me, this is a classic pump and dump. And this is a, you know, this is not a penny. Well, it's a dollar stock, I suppose, a penny stock. And at the moment, it's a question of, is it time, you know, for it to to come back again? Well, certainly on the daily chart, yesterday. <laughs> there was a lot of volume under that, under this candle here. We've got a wick to the bottom of that candle. It's also triggered the volatility candle. It's gone back into the spread of that candle, and it looks like the, um, you know, the volume is going on it. And if it's certainly, and because it's heavily shorted, <coughs> and if it's taken on, as I said, by the activist traders who, you know, who want to uh, give the uh, the hedge funds a bit of a bloody nose, then um, certainly they would. And at four dollars seventy-two, you know, I'm sure they would just pile into it. But it's, it'd be interesting to see how this uh, this stock sort of plays out in the coming weeks. So I'm going to keep an eye. Certainly, we're looking at Tesla. We'll see what happens tomorrow. We'll see what happens to Vertex, and we'll see what Viac. Uh, happens the next time we uh, we have another one of these sessions. So if you've got any questions on anything I've said, please just drop them into the chat box. I'm going to pass over to David. David, can I pass over to you? Is that okay? Yeah, I'll pass over to David, and um, that that's it. I'm not sure I'm going to uh, going to hear a contribution uh, from me again, but if you don't, uh, it's been lovely to catch up with you. And as I said, uh, I'll um, um, I'll catch you next time.
<laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, very warm welcome. Hopefully, you can hear me. Hopefully, you can see my screen. I'm just turning around. Yep, I can see it around us. So, hopefully, you can see it as well. I'm just going to move the chat box out of the way there. Brilliant. Um, let's start with Dear Tesla, uh, which I have up here in four time frames. Very different, actually. I've got one minute at the top left, I've got three minute top right. Bottom left, I've got five minutes, and this is the daily down at the bottom here, which you've actually seen on Finviz briefly, but let me just highlight it for a moment. It's a really nice move going on at the moment, falling away. It's what I expected to see. I'll talk, it, talk you through the chart. But this is basically, let me just pull it open a little bit more if I can. There we go. This is Tesla, and when you look at it from a volume perspective, we had a gap up, we had a volatility trigger, widespread candle, but a ton of volume coming in. Then we had this candle here, volatility trigger, ton of volume coming in. Now, the and we've had a similar sort of spread of price action today. You probably can't see it, but there's actually quite a decent wick to the upside there. And this is the body now forming at 10.35. This is a huge amount of volume going in here. Um, just move that up a little bit. I mean, we're up to 60 million here. Um, so there's a massive amount of volume going in here. But what's more interesting, that's on the daily. But if you actually move this over to the, let's have a look at the monthly. Very slow time frame, I agree. But if you look at the uh, context of the volume here against the monthly price action, I mean, to say that that is an anomaly is, uh, I would suggest, understatement of the year. Um, even someone who is not particularly familiar with uh, volume and price uh, would look at that and say, well, and bear in mind, we're 27th of October. So, yeah, we've got a few days to run yet. But, you know, where's the volume going to finish up? I don't know, maybe 600 million, maybe something like that. But if you look at it in the context of, just from a very common sense perspective, to move you know, $300, $350 on a stock price, how, and to do it on this sort of volume, you know, is this in agreement or is this in disagreement? And that's basically, it really sums up the whole premise of what volume price analysis methodology is about. It is looking for um, very simple, when you start very simple, um, anomalies in this way where you've either got very low volume as you have here with an extreme price move or where you have the opposite which is very high volume and you have a very limited move and they are anomalous and uh, I mean there are many other aspects to volume price analysis but this is just such a, a clear example that it's it's hard to, to to read it in any other way for this price to move that far, you would expect to see, I mean, you only have to compare it with the volume here. Okay, this was a down candle. We saw some strong buying coming in there, no problem at all. That's what you expect to see. You know, we had a, what, a $200, $250 move here. You know, you expect to see that sort of volume associated. And it, in exactly the same way as you've got this anomaly here with this candle, we had this anomaly here with this candle too. Look at the volume associated with it, pretty low. We've had this sharp rally higher. Now, it's not to say that the, the price is going to collapse, but certainly from an investment or a trading perspective, what you're looking for is at the very least some sort of congestion to follow, if not a full-blown reversal. And, you know, that's what we got flame for. So, um, hey-ho, you know, our shoulders are broad. Let's go back to the daily and I'll pop that back full size. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. You know, it's falling quite nicely. As an intraday trader, this is a really nice move that's developing. Pull it up on three minute. The trend monitor, as you saw there very briefly, is, is a red. This is on one minute, remember. So we're falling away on red. We're negative here. We're negative on three. We're negative on five, being pretty negative on five right the way throughout. But this is a nice move. And this is just confirming, the volume here is confirming the, the nature of the move. In other words, the downside, there's two aspects to it. You've got widening spreads, which is one aspect, which is what you're always looking for in the down move. In the same way, in an up move, you're looking for the same sort of thing. You're looking for widening spreads all the time. So you've got widening spreads, but you've got a rising volume. And that is confirming the, the bearish nature of this little move at the moment. Now, I say this is a little move. We've gone from where 1040 to... Where are we? 10.32. It's eight dollars, you know, which for a, 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 a stock move is a decent move. 
traders will be making money hand over fist. Now, the other aspect, obviously, to as Anna mentioned, in terms of volume price analysis, is not just the analysis of volume and price, but it's also to do with levels. And that's where, you know, there are two aspects to um, analyzing levels and, and reading levels as the price action develops. The first is with the accumulation distribution indicator, which is this one, with all these various widths of line on the chart and the beauty of the indicator is that it it paints a picture of strength and resistance from a price based perspective you don't even need you can glance at the chart and instantly you can see these strong levels this was a very strong level the price came up hit it you know it's it's acting as resistance it's sitting on top of the price action here it's it's acting as a buffer as a barrier to the price moving higher these other levels here are less important. This was tested once, that was tested six times, this was tested twice, that was tested once, this is three times, three times, et cetera, et cetera. What's also important though is when they act as clusters. When you get little clusters like this you had here, in themselves they are relatively unimportant when compared to these very strong levels that you get of much thicker levels. When they cluster together in this way, then of course they become much stronger. So you get two. You've got two levels here, which in them, as I say in themselves are relatively minor, but if you add them together, it doesn't double. You don't say, well, I've got two two levels of, of three here, so it's equivalent to a six. It's not a it's not a game of conquers, but nevertheless, they will increase the strength of those levels of support and resistance and act accordingly. So price-based support and resistance is extremely important in terms of the volume price methodology. Got a little bit of buying coming in here. You can see it here. What I've just to change tack, what I've got down the bottom here is the tick speedometer. Now, normally the tick speedometer over here is used to um, to configure your tick charts. If you're trading on tick charts, trading stocks intraday, then you need to know what tick chart setting to set those to. Uh, otherwise, you're just trading blind. And that's what the tick speedometer does. It's one of its functions. It actually delivers the optimal tick setting to set your tick charts to, because otherwise it's just guesswork. But what it also does, as you can see at the bottom here, it, it has this traffic light system. And the reason it's attached to this time frame chart is because what it's telling me is where we go into red, we're moving into periods of low activity. And ideally for trading on an intraday basis, what we want to see is the orange and the green. We want to see these punctuated regions here of orange and green because it means we're seeing increased activity. We've got increased activity here. We've got buying coming in. We've got this wick to this lower candle here. Let's pull that out, make it a little bit bigger if I can. Got a wick to the lower body, got good volume coming in there. So I've peeled away the volume over on the right hand side. So it's a bit more demonstrable. There we go. It makes it even more demonstrable still. OK, I'll come back to it. So what we're seeing is we're seeing buying coming in here. So what we're looking for is a little bounce here. Now, bear in mind what we're looking at thereafter is several things we're looking at and to, to, to lead on what, to what I was going to say next was we've looked at these levels which are based on price-based support and resistance. The other levels you look at are those based on volume because this volume histogram which is associated with the VPOT which is this level here this yellow dashed line is when price and vo price is in agreement. In other words there's no bias between bullish and bearish price sentiment. The the two factions, if you like, the bulls and the bears, it's like a tug of war, to put it in a simple analogy, where the two teams are equally weighted and the, the little white flag that sits in the middle of a tug of war stays in the same place. It doesn't move. As soon as one of those teams uh, or or uh, bullish or bearish sentiment takes hold, then the market moves away from the volume point of control and starts to move towards these areas of uh, on the histogram. Now, the importance of the areas on the histogram is that when you come down to areas such as this, where you've got what we call a low volume node, volume acts in the same way as does price from a support and resistance perspective. So when price approaches these areas of low volume, you expect the price to move through there fairly quickly because just as in the way as price will act as a support mechanism, so volume will act as a support mechanism in this case because it's very lightweight. 
when you've got price moving around the VPOT where you've got the heaviest concentration or where you've got vol the price trying to break through, if, for example, should Tesla start to roar higher, first of all, it's got to break through the volume point of control itself where you've got this ton of volume waiting. You'll have old orders there. You'll have new orders sitting there, all sorts of congestion there. So when the price gets to these areas of high volume, you expect it to congest. So it's using volume in exactly the same way as you do with price-based support and resistance. And that's the, that's the other factor, if you will, of the volume point of control and how to use it. You can see that little bounce taking, taking place. And the other, the other aspect to, to price is also, uh, in this example here, you've got two candles. Now, when you overlay this candle on top of that one, what you've got is a hammer candle. And that's why these are so important. Now, it's very easy to do that with two candles. It's very difficult to do it with more than that. Just as I'm speaking, you can see we've got a very strong level. This is on, a, this is on the one minute chart. We've got a very strong level on the accumulation distribution indicator here of price-based resistance coming into play at 1038. So if the market is gonna test that, fine. You know, It's an area to be aware of. More importantly, if this is going to recover, it's got to break through all this volume that sits around this region. It's got to get through this level. It's got to get through this price level and then get out the other side and up into this low volume area. And we've got relatively lightweight um, price based resistance sitting above. So for this price to get through onto the next level, if you're bullish at the moment, there are several factors, certainly from a one minute perspective. And bear in mind, that when you're looking at timeframes in multiple in multiple charts, a slower time frame will always, always carry more weight than a faster time frame. So if you've got something that's coming up to a significant level in a five minute chart and you're on the one minute chart, it will carry far greater weight, be far more significant than what is happening on your one minute chart. So you've always got to bear that in mind as well. This is coming up to test this. So for this to break through here, we've got to get through here. We need to see decent volume. We've got some weakness coming in. The volume's falling away on that last candle. Tried to rally. Let's see if it tests it, if it's able to get through there. Let's see what happens. Just wait a couple of minutes to see what happens on this particular chart because it's at an interesting juncture. We've got this to get through. And then once we're through that, then we're going to push up through here. And what we expect to see around the 1040 area is congestion building because in exactly the same way as when it came down to this level, it congested, we would expect to see the same thing because we've got all this volume sitting here. So we expect to see congestion if it does indeed break through this level. Just keep an eye on that for a moment. Trend monitor, you can see, is just starting to transition back into bullish mode. We've had the two bar reversal. And what I was saying about this two bar reversal is, yes, it's very easy to overlay one on another on a one minute chart or indeed any time frame chart. But if trying to overlay three or four candles together and get a reading on it is much more difficult, which is why we use multiple time frames. It's another aspect of using multiple time frames. Just see if this has actually hold or does break through. It's going to have another run at it. Just hold it there for a moment. And when you're scanning your eye across here, you pick up all the other nuances of, of VPA. Look at the volume here under these two candles up at the top here. We had a nice candle there, that looked fine. Then we get weakness, we get a pivot high up here. So we've got this three candle range with a pivot on top. You know, Down we come. And what have we got in the price waterfall? We've got a classic rising volume. That's what you wanna see in a price waterfall. If you're trading short, this is what you want to see. Ideally, you want to see widening spreads, but you definitely want to see rising volume exactly in the way it's shown here. I couldn't have drawn it better myself. It's just a, a classic example of a price waterfall. That's what you're looking for. And as Anna said, I have a strong bias to the short side for that simple reason that markets, I have a preference. Um, and that's you know something I'm aware of, just have to be aware. And of course, just coming over to this region, this has been tested, tested, Every time it's tested and holds, it gets stronger. It's like um, Popeye and his spinach. If you've seen the cartoons, he eats the spinach, his muscles grow stronger. It's exactly the same principle here. Is it going to break through? Well, you've certainly got wicks to the lower body here. You've got two wicks here, and you've got some, some decent support under that last one. It's just 
requiring the effort of a decent candle to break through there. But it just shows the power of, of the, the indicator and it does all this for you. So it's building, constantly building this picture. It's rebuilding the whole time. Every time a level is tested in, within the price action, it will rebuild and uh, redraw that level each time you refresh the screen. And then, of course, you're looking at other charts, you're looking at the other time frames, what's going on on the three minutes, drop down onto the three minute for a moment. Let's just have a look at that. OK, we saw the buying coming in here. We had the pivot underneath. We've got a classic pivot arrangement here. What have we got here in terms of support and resistance issues? We've got a hugely strong area here, this, this very wide dashed line that's been tested seven times. So that, that was acting as support at this point. Now it's acting as resistance, of course. We've got a, a relatively minor level here at three. We've got some more building here, which are being tested right now. But also what's of interest, we've got a rally here, but we've got a rally under falling volume. What is that telling us? And more importantly, the spreads are narrowing. And I'll show you that also on the indices. And it's one of the factors, certainly on the daily timeframes, where you're looking at it and thinking, do you know what? This is starting to look weak. What we call catenary price action, where you see this, this curving effect. So you'll see a market do this. The, the spreads are nice at the bottom. And then gradually, as it gets higher and higher, the spreads flatten off because the market is struggling. It's weakening, it's weakening, weakening, and, and over it goes. So you get this arching effect all the time in terms of price action. OK, it's pretty stable there at the moment. It's not doing a lot, kind of banging into all those levels. Then you're down onto the five minute. What are you looking at in terms of five minute? Exactly the same principles. You've got the VPOC here in the way. So, you know, whatever happens now, where are we? Eight o'clock our time. So another hour to run. Whatever happens, if the market does, if this stock does actually climb back to 1048, 1049, you can guarantee it is going to congest around the VPOC because that is what happens. That is what you expect to see. Um, it is inevitable. It's very, very unusual that any price can go straight through an area of this heavy congestion, just like a knife through butter. It doesn't happen. What you will see on the, the low volume notes, that is where you will see it happen. And that's the beauty of having the VPOC and the histogram itself, because when you approach these areas, it gives you a heads up as to what is likely to happen next from a VPOC histogram perspective. So that's Tesla. Um, but that you know, that methodology, that approach, that apply, that could apply to any stock you care to pull up. And indeed, any chart doesn't have to be a stock, can be commodity uh, futures, uh, forex, whatever it is, ETFs, doesn't matter. The methodology applies simultaneously. Let's just go back to just see what the, oh, hold on a minute. Yeah, Anna says there's a question. I shall just answer. Uh, are those levels support and resistance? They're both. They're calculated by the indicator. Uh, you can color them as you wish, um, but obviously, um, as if they're support and they're breached, then they become resistance and vice versa. Um, so they are not, the, the blue and red does not distinguish one from the other. It's just the color differentiation that I use, the, uh, you know, we use it everywhere. Um, and they are being drawn by the indicator. And as I say, every time a level is tested, then the indicator recalculates and uh, reassesses and also what is it also important to realize is the accumulation presents these levels within the price action which is where you want to see it so it's very much within the price action uh, where you know you want to know what's going on and you want to know where these levels are so they're constantly being re recalculated the whole time yeah so three means yes exactly uh, that's exactly it very very simple uh, these little numbers up the side here, and in fact, it's available. The accumulation distribution indicator is available on NinjaTrader. It's a, we've got it on TradingView, and we have it on um, TradeStation, which I've got down here somewhere. Um, and it works exactly the same way. In fact, if I pull up TradeStation, probably show you it there as well. Here we go. Have I got it on here somewhere? Um, no. Let's have a look. Have I got it on one of the? Yeah. Here we go. Um, Let's pull up one of these. Oops, sorry. Let's just pull that up there. There we go. Exactly the same principle. Uh, these little numbers up the side, you can probably see them a bit clearer here, but this level has been tested six times to date. And if it's tested again in the near future, then you know that will change and it'll it the the algorithm 
is working in the background. It's a complex algorithm, but that's what it's doing the whole time. It is calculating, recalculating every time one of these levels is tested and holds, then it will increase it from six to seven or whatever it is. So, you know, that's just the way it works. As I say, it's on, we've got it on TradeStation. We have it on, I've got TradingView over on the other side on another terminal. Um, I won't pull that over at the moment. So let's just drop that back out of the way and go back onto Ninja. Seems like it's it's managed to push through there. I've got another little level above there. Um, let's just head over to the indices themselves, see what's going on, broadly speaking. Broadly speaking, it's been an up day for, this is the uh, the three sisters. I've got the YM, December contracts. This is uh, YM at the top uh, top left, NQ in the middle, and the ES S&P 500 on the right-hand side. So this is NASDAQ. So basically, it's down NASDAQ and uh, S&P 500. In terms of what's been going on, just pull these up full size, make it a bit easier. This is the price action I was referring to. This is the Dow. Um, and this is the price action I was referring to, this curbing effect, which you know is not particularly uh, a sign of great strength. It's this arching over. It's And when it's associated with, with not only narrowing spreads, but also volume that's trying to push it higher, and that volume's really not going anywhere. You can see yesterday, we've got this tiny little candle at the top here on, on the Dow with a lot of volume going in there. In other words, effort and result. In other words, if effort and result, Wyckoff's third law was in agreement, this candle at the top should be somewhere in the size of, if you look at uh, you know something similar, what have we got? I don't know. Um, you know, something, where are we? Something like this, for example, maybe not quite that much, you know, maybe a bit less than that. But that's what we should see if price and volume are in, in agreement. Clearly, they're in disagreement because you've had a huge amount of effort gone in down here but has actually resulted in no forward motion. The analogy I always use is, and it's a very simple analogy, it's not perfect, is of imagine driving a car up a steep, icy mountain road in the middle of winter, and the road is getting steeper. You are applying more pressure to the gas, to the accelerator, and you are slowing down and you will get to a point where you are applying full pressure, but you're not actually moving. In fact, the wheels are spinning and you're not moving forwards. In fact, at some point you'll start moving backwards and sliding back down the hill because you've got no grip. And that's essentially what is happening here. You've got a massive amount of effort going in, but the price action is not moving forward. So what does that tell you? It tells you this is heavy selling into a market that is not uh, accepting buyers. In other words, it's not receptive to a move higher. It's it the 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 sellers are in here. You know, the, every time the market tries to rally, the sellers hit it. It rallies. The sellers hit it. It rallies. The sellers hit it. That's what's going on. So this is the market makers selling into weakness, selling into weakness, uh, and that's a, a very simple example of, of what you look at all the time. You're looking for this an uh, analogy of of cause and effect, of, of effort and result, you know, is are things in agreement or are they in disagreement? Now, what we've got going on at the moment is we've got all three of them in agreement, whereas this is down, that was up, the NQ and the ES was kind of, well, razor blade really, similar sort of price action to the Dow here. We had effort, a lot of effort going in, really going nowhere, trying to rally. It, it was up earlier on, sorry, just kill that off. It was up earlier on, Let's close that down. It was up earlier on, but now it's uh, you know it's 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 down a little bit, and now we're starting to see a nice price waterfall develop, and we've got all three. And when you're trading on one indices or one index rather, it's great to have all three up. I mean, what we're seeing here is is confirmation across the timeframes of uh, the the sentiment that is taking hold right now. Once again, we've got levels in here. You know, we have a very strong level here. This is the VPOC. I've actually got it in purple here for some reason. Don't know quite why. Coming down some low volume area here. The trend monitors transition through to red. The volume here is distorted because this is the open. This is 2:30 our time. So this is when uh, certainly until next week we go. Our clocks go back at on Saturday night, Sunday morning. So this will change. But at 2.30, that's when the US market's generally open for us. If I slide that out the way, you'll see that you know the volume is not quite so uh, tiny as it was. It's still significant. We've got this nice move going. Looks nice, very nice move. And that's been confirmed across all three. 
So if we go on up to the multiples, go across the multiple window, which is over here. I think I've got the NQ. There we go. Really nice move. Nice price waterfall developing. Really nice tradable move. Trend one. This is. Sorry. No, this is on. This is the NQ. I've got six six time frames on the NQ. 15 second, one minute, three minute, five minute, 10 minute, and 15 minutes. So real intraday stuff. And the key thing to watch here is if you're trading this, you know, as I said earlier, the significant is going to be. The slower time frame is going to is going to trump your faster time frame. So if you're on 15 second, and you're trading that, and you're thinking, great, lovely, you know, I'm making money here, all nice and dandy. We've got rising volume, excellent stuff. Bear in mind over here, you've got a volatility trigger, which is a bit worrying. You've got a, a VPOC appearing here, so you're looking for possible congestion to build around that region now, because this is a three minute time frame. And that's high volume under that volatility tr trigger. So you're looking for congestion to start building. So if you're hoping for this to slide lower, I would close out. I'd be sitting and waiting now, waiting for the next phase of price action to take hold. Because of this over here, we've got nothing down on five, I don't think, which is coming into play right now. But if we're going to go all the way back down to 620 from 640, then sure as eggs are eggs, then this volume point of control is going to be mighty important because that's where the market will pause in terms of that particular time frame. It broke through this level here, which is very strong. It also broke through this level here also, which was strong. If the candle closes off below that, which it looks as though it might do, then that is going to act as a strong resistance in, the rec in any recovery or reversal. Down onto the 10 minute, Coming straight down onto a volume point of control here on 10 minute, that is going to trump all of those charts before it. So the 10 minute is more important than the five minute, more important than the three minute. So plus in addition, we've got some some price based support there as well coming into play. So 35 is probably the mark that you would expect to see. The trend monitoring is just starting transition now. 35 is probably the mark at which you would look for an out depending on what you were doing. There we go, and down onto 15. Okay, and we've got a volume point of control down down at 6.10 if we get that far, but certainly the, the 10 minute one is gonna be important. It's really falling fast now, lovely stuff. This is the sort of, you know, this is where you make money really quick. Now you just gotta get in, load up, move quickly, multiple contracts. You've gotta decide with your scaling and scaling out. If you're scaling in, fine. If you're scaling out fine you know the pros and cons of both approach there is no right or wrong way to trade you've got to find what works for you scaling in is based on the premise of something actually happening you're basing it on a on a on a, um, a price move that's already taken place in other words you're basing it on fact whereas scaling out is based on i wouldn't say hope but it's based on expectation in other words you haven't got any facts to back up the fact that you're going in with multiple contracts Whereas when you're scaling in, you are because you have something that, that's tangible that's happened and you're basing your next decision to load up and add further contracts based on what has already gone before. Very different approach. It's it's nuanced. It's very different. Some people uh, do it one way, others do it other. And some people you know, just don't like doing it at all. OK, what's significant now is if I just pull this out. We've got a volatility trigger, hugely significant. This is on the five minute time frame, massively significant signal. Uh, if I saw that now and I was short, I'd be out. End of. If I had multiple contracts, I might let one run. But generally speaking, as I said so many times before, I'd be out by now. That's it. I'm done. Because this has major significance. It's a five minute time frame, ton of volume coming in under it. What does that tell you? It tells you the big operators are in there. This is going to either congest or reverse one or the other. And in addition to that, it's down at the volume point of control. So I'm out, done and dusted, that's it. Now, if the market carries on lower, I don't mind because all I've lost is, you know, maybe a few points around here somewhere. If it crashes lower, fine, I'll jump back in again. What have you lost? Nothing. Do I want to sit through this potential congestion up here? No, of course not. And worse still, do I want to be stopped out? Absolutely not. You've got rising volume here. So this is really confirming the, 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 uh, the move there. That was nice. And then we're coming down to the volume point of control on 15, which is hugely significant, as I mentioned before. That's why the market has paused. And that's how to intraday trade. Now, this could be a stock. This happens to be an index. I've talked very quickly. 
Um, but that's, you know, that's the speed your thought process have to go through if you're an intraday trader. I love the 15 second chart. You know, I use this a lot myself because it just gives me instant heads up. What I would suggest to you is that if you're, I'm not suggesting you use the 15 second chart for trading. And by the way, look at the speed it went through that, that low volume area there. This is what you're looking for. You're looking for these low volume regions where the market is going to go through there very quickly and you're lining it up with these price based levels as well of, of support and resistance based off the accumulation distribution indicator. But what I would urge you to do if you're not familiar with VPA, use a fast time frame chart, not for trading, but for improving your knowledge and speed of, of just seeing things happen. You know, it's all very well doing it on an hourly chart. It's it's quite tedious. I mean, when we started, we actually has to we used to use um, we used to print off charts for one another and just cover them up and just read them in that way, you know, line by line or, or bar by bar. Nowadays, you've got all these free platforms. You've got most platforms have second charts on them. Not all. Um, I'm not sure MT5 does actually. I think it might do. I um, can't remember now off the top of my head, but certainly, you know, Ninja, you've got second charts on TradeStation, TradingView, you know, all these great platforms. Um, so, you know, use it in that way. Okay, now if this is not going to hold here, would I jump back in again? I would certainly still be cautious because you've got a VPOC here and you've got a VPOC here and you've got a VPOC here. So you've got three VPOCs on much slower timeframes on the 5, 10 and 15 at the bottom as opposed to the the 15, 1 and 3. And another great way to trade that move is on multiple Renkos, which I've got here. I know it says YM, but I think I've got the NQ on it. There we go. Okay. This is trading that move on, on multiple Renkos. And I've got, and what this workspace is about is really blending time-based charts with non-time-based charts. Now, the beauty of a non-time-based chart, like a Renko here or a tick chart, is that it reveals raw momentum. You never see momentum on a time chart because a time chart is tied to time. A 15 second candle here is a 15 second candle. At the end of 15 seconds, it goes on to the next one and the next one and the next one. That's it. It doesn't do anything else, but on a non-time based chart like this, which is a Renko, these bars will form when the market is moving fast, much more quickly. When the market is moving slow, they will move, they will build more slowly because they are independent of time. Now, what I've actually done here, I've created three Renkos. It's very unusual. It's very powerful. A lot of our customers use it. Um, you set them up to align with the time charts below because then you've got the, the power of volume price analysis on the time chart below coupled with the power of trading a non-time based chart above. So I've got this on 15 seconds. Just click on that, see what it comes up with. The Renko optimizer, which is this indicator, will deliver the optimal setting for your instrument irrespective whether it's gold it'll be in dollars per ounce if oil it's in dollars per barrel uh, here we're talking about index points ticks it's telling me it's 19 so I should click on there okay and there we are it's delivering me 19 what does that 19 mean basically it is you divide that by four because we're on uh, nq here so we're on four ticks a point if we're on ym it would deliver index points so it would be on maybe five points or ten points whatever it may be so each of these here is basically worth uh, almost five points on the on the Nasdaq 100. A ton of money, I can tell you. This is on uh, 30 seconds. Let's just reset. This one's currently on 14. May have changed a little bit. Let's change that up. See what that comes in at. Okay, there. Yeah, it's settling down at uh, 24. It's nice and easy. So that's six points on there. There we go. So each of those bricks is worth six points. And then on to the one minute time frame. Just set that one up. You can see I've got the accumulation distribution on the indicator on here works exactly the same way. Gives you these really strong levels. You can see the numbers more clearly here as well. Uh, and where are we? 31. Okay, so that's just over six, well, 6 6.25 points. There we go. Six and a quarter points on each of those. There we go. It's very powerful. You've got the trend monitor here at the bottom, which is confirming the, the bearish sentiment right now. I've also got the trend dots on here. Now, the trend dots and the trend monitor work in tandem. They are perfect combination for this particular approach because the trend dots work close to the price action the trend monitor takes a more considered view of price action and what you will see with the trend dots is you will see them moving when there is a congestion they will change color 
And when there is a reversal, they will move to the underside in this case, because we're coming from the upside, or we're coming down and we're going to start climbing. And they will move to the underside. Now the trend monitor has not changed yet, and it will not change for a little while because it takes a more considered view. You can see here, we're starting to get blue coming in here. We had some gray, we're starting to get blue. It takes a more considered view of, of changes in trend. In other words, it's a slower looking indicator. It will make, take a more considered view of what is going on. And once this starts to change, then you will start to see this transition through to could be a darker red, could go to darker blue. Occasionally it goes from bright red to bright blue in a very a dramatic color change when the price action really does change very swiftly. But generally speaking, you will see this start to shift through the color sequence of dark, a bright red to dark red, dark red to dark blue, dark blue into bright blue. Not always in that sequence. Sometimes it misses one out. It might go from bright red to dark blue and into bright blue. But essentially what you're seeing now is you're starting to see the trend dots develop underneath, change color. You're also starting to see the price action come up and hit this level here, which is a strong price level, very strong price level on the support and resistance indicator, which is coming into play as I speak. As it is over here on the uh, on the 30 second time frame, and you've got it again over here on the one minute time frame. But it's just a, it's just a fantastically powerful way to use multiple time frames but multiple time frames with non uh, time frame based charts of which the renko is supreme in, in our view got a little pivot formed here that little pivot is is a little pivot to to notify you if you've got a potential change in the price action in other words an intraday change in sentiment from bullish to bearish it's not a get in get out signal you know it doesn't work like that but it's just giving you another little piece of the jigsaw to help you in your trading decisions and trading armory. Let's just go back to uh, just something else I wanted to show you. This is on, uh, where are we? Soft commodities. There we go. You may not trade softs, uh, but this is on uh, soybean. I've got the soybean contract here top left this is corn and i've got wheat over on the right hand side and i just wanted to show you soybean because again it's another example this is um this is when the soybean market's underway really nice uh, strong move early on in the session uh no particular strong price levels at that point we went through you know some reasonably uh low volume here in a nice low volume area here low volume area breaking higher that was all fine and we got up to the volume point of control the candle I want to show you is this one. Ton of volume coming in, absolute huge amount of volume coming in, and a volatility trigger. You know, what is that telling you? It's telling you that, first of all, through the, the, the prism of the volatility indicator, which is a very, it's such a simple indicator, but boy, it's so powerful. It gets you out of so much trouble. And the beauty of it is it actually triggers in real time. Now, if you're on a, if you're on a one minute chart, you could say, well, okay, it, it it doesn't, it's not that important. But if you're on a five minute chart, boy, oh boy, it is important. It's hugely important because what you will see is the price action, the, the trigger for the indicator is when price action moves outside the, outside the average true range. In other words, the, the average, if you will, you know, the expected. And what you've got to remember about volatility is all that's happened here is that this price move from, I don't know, 12.58 up to 12.66, whatever it was, normally that would take place over, you know, this sort of range. You would expect four candles to, to deliver that sort of price spread, or five candles even. And all volatility is is compression of time, nothing else. That's all it is. But what the, the power of volatility is that it is driven by the market makers and operators, and it drives one emotional fear and that is the fear of missing out because i can absolutely guarantee you without fear of anything that at this point when this market was rushing up traders who'd missed out on this lot the johnny come latelys would have been jumping in here quite happily thinking oh terrific we're going to make some easy money here always wrong They're always wrong because this is telling you loud and clear as soon as you get this volatility trigger as I said before, close out 
or if you're in here and you got in early, fine. Don't jump in here because you're going to get absolutely taken to the cleaners every single time. And all it's looking at is the the average true range is a compression of time into one candle. So this would normally take place over five or six candles. It's compressed into time. The market makers of big operators have, have racked the price up here really fast, rammed it high. They know exactly what's going to happen. All the traders are going to jump in here thinking it's nice, easy money, fear of missing out. Bang. What have we got? Congestion. We've got a full-blown reversal in this case. It doesn't always reverse, but nine times out of ten, you'll be sitting in congestion. And congestion is extremely painful. You don't want to sit through congestion. So I just wanted to show you that on uh, soybean. I'm not sure if we have the same on similar similar sort of price action here. And again, uh, the nice thing with, with trading any of these soft commodities, I'm not saying they all, all follow one another, but generally speaking, because they are obviously they're, they're soft commodities and you will have all the geographics and everything else, they will tend to follow one another, and no, although not always. Let's just see what's happening on, just very quickly, um, oil. Another one we trade a lot, another one we analyze a lot. Um, coming up to $85 a barrel, we did a post the other day. You can see the weakness coming in here. Uh, candle here, wick to the upper body, narrow spread, lots of volume coming in here. You know, there is some support, but there is weakness now coming in. But we're still bullish on, on oil longer term. Still probably going up to, uh, to $90 a barrel uh, in the longer term. So have a quick look on gold. Gold's interesting. Um, Poor old gold. Here we are. This is another one that um, you know. If we trade, if we talk, if we if we do analysis on gold and say it's going down, we get absolutely flayed alive on Twitter and all the rest of it because the gold bugs. And I understand it. I get the. I do. I mean, at heart, I'll be honest. I I guess I am a gold bug. I you know, to me, it's a precious metal, and it's nice to see it going higher. But from a trading perspective, I couldn't care less what it does. Um, but gold bugs are fanatical, as indeed there are, you know, fanatics in many markets, and, and Tesla is one, and, and I guess cryptos are another. But you know, that's unfortunately, yeah, it will go down. Of course, it will. It's not always going to go up. But at the moment, you know, we're bullish on gold, have been for a while. But what's interesting about gold right now? Let me just move the. This is time and sales, by the way. It's time and sales window over here. This is these are the contracts going through. Um, I'm not interested in all these ones and twos down here. I'm looking for big blocks. I won't go through that now. Um, but what's interesting about the daily chart for gold is really this whole area. There are two key levels, and we've written about it. Anna's done multiple analysis on her, her site. This level here is absolutely key, 1840. If gold gets through 1840, it will carry on to 1900 and probably beyond there. But at the moment, it is absolutely struggling. And the region it's struggling at, we've got the volume point of control here. Just pull this back a bit and see a bit clearer. We've got the volume point of control underneath here. We've got this yellow dashed line, which is the, the center. In other words, we're back at uh, price agreement. We've got this immensely strong uh, red dashed line above of the accumulation distribution indicator, which is forcing, it's capping the price advances all the time. It's just sitting on them the whole time. It really is a... It's almost impenetrable at the moment, but that is absolutely key. Now, if, if the the if the metal manages to break above that and hold above it and start to claw it, to, and then what it's got to do, it's got to get through all this volume that sits all the way up until we get to about 1830. So all this volume in this region here has got to be breached. So you know, from 1800 to let's say 1830 is absolutely critical. What we want to see is some nice price action, good volume supporting it, lots of, uh, you know, supportive price action on the daily time frame. And then when we get to this key level here, that will be absolutely key as to what's going to happen longer term. But it's all back to VPA again. And in exactly the same way, it doesn't, say, it doesn't matter whether you're looking at a one minute chart or a daily chart as there. It's all the same methodology and the same application of levels and flow support and resistance from a volume-based perspective, from a price-based perspective, using the indicators, using multiple timeframes, using non-time-based charts, using time-based charts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's just go back finally onto the multiples for where we were before. There we go, let's see what's going on there. Okay, what did I say at the time? I said, look, you know, these the, the VPOC here is really important. 
I'm expecting it to congest. I'm not expecting it to, you know, to rush through here. It hasn't. It's congesting. We've got levels building above. You know, this is struggling a bit now. You can see the volume's falling away, trying to rally on falling volume. Not looking terribly strong, but nevertheless, it's in congestion. It's what you expect to see. It's in congestion here. Why? Because we had a volatility trigger. We got a VPOC. You know, we're trading in the spread of the candle. It's what it's all about. It, trading is is about having the confidence and having the ability to read either through volume, through support and resistance, through your indicators, to, to have a, a good sense of what you think is likely to happen next and to base your trading accordingly. You're not always going to be right. Of course we're not. We never are. You have to accept losses. It's part and parcel. You know, but the, the, the difference is that when you get into a trade, it's maintaining a position to actually maximize what you can from that position. As, as I was showing you earlier in that price waterfall, we got down to those levels where I said, look, this is going to pause. This is going to halt. Get out. You've taken a decent slug of profit. Fine. Because that slug of profit will over uh, overlay all those little small losses that inevitably you will take. Because if your trading account is, has got multiple small losses, but you've got some nice chunky big wins in there, you'll have fewer of them. In a 10 trade, in a to take a 10 trade ratio, you might have seven small losses, but three winners. Your seven small losses might be 10 points each, let's say 70 points, but your three winners are 30 points each. So it outweighs. So your your account moves forward, and that's the way it should be. So you can you can move forward with an account even having eight losers out of 10, as long as the losers are small and the two winners are big. It's the simple. It's not a it's not a 50-50 game anymore. That's the way that the, the, the cards fall, six, seven to ten, eight to ten even. You know, that's what you're looking at the whole time. But those winners, you've got to sit in those winners. And that's why the trend monitor is so important, using it in multiple time frames, using all the indicators in that way that I've just gone through. Gone way over time. Um, apologies for that. Uh, yeah, the name of the kit is accumulation distribution. It's... Uh, yeah, and we call it the ACD indicator for for brevity, but you will find it on on as I say on the three on the three platforms. Uh, it's on TradeStation, it's on NinjaTrader, and it is on uh, TradingView as well. Unfortunately, we can't develop it on uh, uh, MT45 because we haven't got the functionality within the um, the code. It's not that we don't want to; it's just we don't have the functionality there to do it. I'm going to stop there um, just very quickly uh, show you where all the uh, sites are. This is quantum trading. This is where you'll find all the indicators. That's the platforms that we have at the moment. Um, just to give you a heads up, the one we've done a lot of work on TradeStation. Uh, sorry, a lot of work on TradingView recently. We've got uh, the radar panel and everything else in there and the um, Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency currency strength indicator there as well. We are now working very heavily on NinjaTrader and what we're what we're working on is the um, uh, market analyzer so that if you have the indicators, you will be able to use them in market analyzer. Uh, because one of the things that, in fact, very quickly, let me just show you this on, Anna mentioned it earlier on. Trading Forex is straightforward in the sense that, generally speaking, you're dealing with 28 instruments, 28 pairs. Um, and that's more or less it. I mean, yes, there are thousands of currencies, but you know, generally speaking, we deal with with the 28 inverted commas majors currency pairs. And the issue with with stocks is, as, as Anna showed you on Finviz, is is actually sorting and and coming up with with a quick way of how to sort. This is on TradeStation. I just want to show you this very very quickly. Um, if I click on that, and go into data. This is a, a very quick scan, a very simple scan. Um, just on a size, um, price, and what have you. Uh, but actually, what I've got on here is RSI. I've said the RSI has got to be greater than 50. So, you know, it pulls up all these. And in fact, in fact I can run the scan again. Just run the scan. There we go. You'll see how quickly it does it. Um, so, this is running a scan. This is running, if you top right here, you can see we're running a scan on 11,300. And that really puts into context this is what you're dealing with. So, you, you're constantly trying to find ways, and you also have to criteria that you want to settle on um, for trying to identify stocks which are going to be of interest to you either for an intraday basis or as, a, as an investment basis. Okay, so that's deliver that lot back. So we know that anything that we click on here 
we'll have if you see down here i've got these all symbol linked as well this is symbol link you can do this on ninja as well so these are symbol linked down here symbol linked to this one um, so you can go through however many there are here hundreds of them I mean, go through these very quickly, but each one of them with a simple criteria, we know will have an RSI, which is greater than 50. This one's got whatever it is, 64, you know, this one's got 63. So, and obviously that is just one simple filter. You put a lot more filters in there. So you'd actually end up with a manageable list, but it, I just wanted to show you it because it's a quick way of many of the platforms. And that's the, one of the reasons that we are um, developing the uh, market analyzer to be a lot more powerful. Um, and we're also looking at new indicators on NinjaTrader as well. So the indicators will work in uh, Ninja in the market analyzer, and you'll be able to use them in that way in terms of filtering, certainly on the indicators. And also we're looking at uh, in, uh, other ways of using the market analyzer in terms of analyzing stocks uh, for, for sorting and filtering as well. So that's where we're putting a lot of effort at the moment in terms of NinjaTrader. Um, as always, if you've bought one indicator from us, you will always get a credit. If you want to upgrade to another package or platform, if you want to upgrade to, let's say you bought one, you want to upgrade to a package or you want to upgrade to full, we will always give you a credit for what you've purchased from us in the past. Moving from platform to platform is very straightforward. We don't charge. I think it's outrageous companies that do. I know several that do, and I think there are, well, I'm sure you can imagine what I was going to call them, but there we go. We don't, if you want to transfer from, a, from one platform to another, we just make it happen. There is no cost involved. The only cost will come if, for example, you're, up, you're upgrading to a, a, a package that has more indicators and is therefore more expensive. So for example, if you went from MT45 to TradeStation, TradeStation has a lot more indicators. It's also got radar screen in there as well. So you would just pay the difference between the full package price, but you, we don't charge you for the privilege of actually moving. So if you've got a, I don't know, a currency strength indicator on MT45 and you want to go off to TradeStation with it, that's fine. It doesn't cost you anything. We just enable it for you and disable the, the MT45 one for you. So it's very simple. The 24-7 support, we are literally here 365 days of the year, I can assure you, even on high days and holidays. And that you do not pay anything for any upgrades. We do all the upgrades, any upgrades to platforms, any upgrades to indicators. It's all included in the one-off price. And you can pay on the EPP as well. We don't charge for that either, where we split the payment into three. So that's what we're doing on indicators. Um, as I say, very heavily involved in NinjaTrader. Um, and we're also, as Anna said, we are you know, just now planning out um, our, our options trading program, which will be bolted on to the Forex trading program, which is here over at quantumtradingeducation.com. So that'll be set alongside that. Hugely popular. And we've also got the funded program there as well, where you trade our money um, at no risk to yourself. And we've got a lot of students on that too. I also have to say, we have a lot of stock traders who've joined the Complete Forex trading program because they are now starting to realize that Forex sits at the heart of the market. Forex is the hub around which everything else rotates. And the reason it does that is very simple because it's the cash. If you're transferring assets from a, a risk asset to, a, to a, a safe haven asset, how are you going to do it? Well, you've got to sell something to buy something else. So it all goes through the Forex world. And gradually the stock trading community is starting to appreciate that. And we, are, we have a lot of stock traders who are now completing the program because they understand the importance of relational analysis. Finally, uh, on Anna's site, this is annacooling.com. This is where you'll find all the books. They're all up on Amazon in Kindle and in paperback too. And this is where you'll see the analysis. Uh, that was, I think that went up this morning, actually. That was on Copper, uh, Alaska Rare, that's ALK. Uh, that's falling nicely. Uh, that's, that's another support level that was breached and really gave a nice signal for a sell on that particular stock. So there we go. That's it. I'm done. Thank you very much indeed for coming along today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we will be, oh gosh, we're back tomorrow morning. Early doors, I think, um, from memory. I think we're 7, don't quote me, 7.30 maybe UK time. Pretty early anyway. So we will be back tomorrow morning for the Forex session. Thank you very much for coming along today. Hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy the rest of the trading day, trading session. Um, and if you're not coming along to the Forex session tomorrow, um, have a great uh, trading week. Uh, think or swim. Uh, yeah, funny you mentioned that, Edwin. It is certainly something we are looking at and will investigate. Uh, we would love to do something for think or swim. 
Um, so if we can, we will. It's certainly on our radar, I can assure you, uh, as is multi-charts because multi-charts comes out of TradeStation on the same uh, coding um, platform. So yeah, we are looking at Think or Swim for sure as well. So thanks very much indeed. See you soon. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day and the week. Uh, stay safe and see you soon and bye for now.